before we start this video, a large thank you to Kira, Jason, Mark, KW, Jam, Mitchell, Tony, Zach, Justin, Kwifet, Jordan, and a name I unfortunately cannot pronounce. Thank you for the support, my friend. I hope you guys enjoy the video. And an immense thank you to Halo Burner and Sora Stratos for their continued support on Patreon. You guys are greatly appreciated. I hope you enjoy the video. Hello everybody and welcome back. If you celebrate the holidays, I hope your break was fantastic. So what's the topic of this video? Well, we're going to start with this. As this lovely commenter pointed out, he says, and I quote here, Love the series. Out of curiosity, is this how we plan to spawn all of our AI characters? It seems odd that we could have dozens if not hundreds of duplicate prefabs to change the location. And of course, this was not the plan. We just had it set up like that so we could quickly get AI into the game and start iterating and actually adding some functionality. So in this video, we're going to begin with setting up a way to spawn a lot of different characters at once. Um, and this will make it really easy. Basically, you can use one prefab, a master prefab, but you can have that prefab spawn in multiple places. And uh, then we're going to begin work on our boss framework, and we're going to place a boss character in the scene. And I do have a character that will be downloadable in the description for anybody who is a patron. More info on that in a bit. All right, guys, so let's start by going to the world here. It's got this open here. And I'm going to go and find my prefab for my low poly man. And what I want to do now is basically use this AI character as a prefab, but we're going to use the low poly man as kind of like a little spawn post. So you can use any object for this. I'm just using the low poly man because it represents a character. You can use a cube, a square, whatever, as long as you can see it in the scene, it's clear where it is. And I'm going to make a new script on this. I'm going to call it AI character spawner. And I'm going to open that up in Visual Studio. So let's start by deleting the start and update functionality as is per tradition. I'm going to drop my namespace. Mine is SG. And then I'm going to start by saying using unity.net code because we're going to be using this here in a bit. And then down here, I'm going to make a header for character. And as this uh, states, this is going to be a couple of variables here in regards to our character. So the first variable is going to be a serializable field game object, and it's going to be the character game object. So this is the actual character that you want to instantiate the prefab that you're going to basically put in the game. And then we're going to have another variable for the instantiated model in case we want to despawn it later. So we'll call this instantiated game object or instantiated character, whichever you prefer. All right, so what's next? Well, let's go right below that. Let's make a start function. And let's just set the game object to false in the start. Uh, basically, this is going to act as a spawner. It's going to spawn the character. And then we want to disable the spawner so it's not just in the scene where you can see it when you actually play the game. So we're going to make a public void attempt to spawn character. And we're going to say if the character game object does not equal null, just so we don't get any errors if it happens to be null, then we're going to perform some logic. Well, what do we want to do? Well, we want to add uh, a reference here to the world AI manager, and we want to add this spawner to a list of spawners. So let's jump over there and make that list. I'm going to make a public list AI character spawner, and I'm going to call it AI character spawners. Now, all we want to do is just add this spawner to that list. So let's reference that right now. And then let's make some logic here for actually spawning the character. So what do we need to do? Well, we can use this game object to our advantage in the scene. So if the first thing we're going to do is say instantiate a game object is equal to instantiate a copy of your character game object. Now, we can actually set the position and the rotation using this little model in game, and we just copy it and then assign it to our instantiated model just by saying instantiate it, transform.position equals transform.position, instantiate it, transform.rotation equals transform.rotation. And also, this assigning to the list should be on awake, not in this function. This function is used to actually spawn the character that's my bad. So let's go up and add the awake function and just paste that inside of there. Okay, so we're assigning it uh, to the list, and we're going to call upon this function here to actually spawn the character when the time comes. So we want to put right here at the bottom, after instantiated game object dot position dot rotation, we want to say instantiated game object dot get component network object dot spawn. That will spawn it on the network so other players can see. Okay, let's jump over to the world AI manager. Let's make a few adjustments. So you can see here now we're currently referencing a list of AI character game objects and we're spawning them. So all we're going to do is actually swap this out now. We're going to delete this array, not list, sorry, because now we're going to use our list of AI character spawners. So the idea is, is we're going to get all the spawners when the game starts, and then once they're all there, we're going to spawn them via this function right now. So you can handle this a different way if you want. There's a billion ways to do this. This is just the, uh, the simplest way right now with what we have in this project. So we're not going to overcomplicate it unless the need arises. 
So we're just gonna say character dot attempt to spawn character. All right, so with that out of the way now, we can keep the despawnable characters the same. Let's save that, go back into the scene, and I'm going to save this as a prefab. I'm gonna rename it to AI Spawner. And again, I'm only using this model because it just represents a character. So drag the character that you want into the character prefab here. Mine's on dead dummy. The instantiate a game object uh, variable can stay blank because that's just what we instantiate in the scene. So now if you duplicate these and you actually give them the rotations and position that you want, if we go into the game now and test this, and before I do that, I'm gonna save them as a prefab. So I'm gonna to go to my prefabs folder and drag in the AI spawner in here like so. And on my prefab, I'm going to make sure I reset the rotation and position as well. Uh, so after that's done, I will save the scene, jump back to the main menu, hit play, now let's jump in the game. Okay, so let's go in the game here and we have an error. Now, why is that? And now I know this immediately. So let's, I'll show you, we're gonna double click this error. You see here, we have this in awake, but it's trying to access the world AI manager on awake. But if we go to the world AI manager, we're not actually setting the world AI manager singleton until awake. So you could change your order of operations and you could make it work that way. Uh, but I'm gonna do one better. We're gonna make this list a private list right here. And we're gonna make it a serializable field. So you can't just add to it from calling it from the script. But let's make a function to add a spawner to the list. And we're actually just gonna rename this function. So spawn all characters, delete all the logic in there. We'll call this spawn character singular. And then we're going to make it a public function. And we're gonna make it require an AI character spawner. And then we're gonna simply add that AI character spawner to the list. And then we're gonna spawn it immediately. No point in overcomplicating it. This works out perfectly right now. So we're just gonna say AI character spawners dot add, we'll add the spawner that we pass, and then we spawn it right away. So we can say AI spawner dot attempt to spawn character. Now let's go and just call this over here. Instead of saying AI character spawners add, we'll just call that spawn character function. Now, if you don't like this and you wanna do it the other way, that's fine, just change your order of operations. If you wanna spawn them all at once after the scene's fully loaded and all that stuff, that's all good and well, do it however you see fit. But right now this works out fine, so we're gonna do it that way. I'm gonna delete the coroutine for wait scene to load and spawn. I'm also gonna delete uh, this check on the start. And when we go to spawn character, we're gonna check here if we are the network uh, manager or rather the host. So I'm gonna say if network manager.singleton is host, then we spawn the character or is server, sorry. Otherwise we don't do that. So now that's done, we can actually go to update here too because we got some errors. We can delete this. This is when we were testing stuff with debug. We can just delete this update function altogether and delete the two debug variables here. You don't need to delete the despawn all characters because we'll use that in the future when we add sites of grace. Um, so on start here again, I'm gonna make sure that I have game object dot set active equal to false on the AI character spawner. Don't wanna forget that. And we should be good to go. So let's go jump into the project here now again in a second and save this and make sure it works. So going in here again and no errors. Yes, they both spawn at their proper places with their proper rotations. Now, does it work if I bring in a connected client? Let's test that to make sure we'll stay on top of it. So I have a connected client. I'm gonna pop in right here and then I'm gonna drag in the window here to make sure it's all working well and good. There I am. And we have a slight problem. So if I actually drag the window over on the screen, I know you probably can't see, let me do it real quick. You can see they're sliding. This is because of an update we made recently to them moving. So if I pause the game here and I'll show you, this is the host. You can see if we click on one of these AI characters, if we go to the animator, you can see the bull for is moving is checked true. But if I go over here on the client, you can see it is not true. Now, why is this? Because we did make that on value change variable. Well, the keyword here is changed. If you join the game when it's already been set, it's not changed since you've joined. So it's never going to update. So a quick fix for that is to go to on network spawn and simply say animator.setBool and then set is moving to the status of the network variable is moving dot value. So you can just paste this here like this. And an alternative way is to just simply call the on is moving changed function and just pass the is moving network variable. Both these ways are both valid. So you can do it this way right here by setting it to the animator, or you can just say character network manager dot on is moving changed. And then on these variables here, it doesn't matter what you pass to the first one. Uh, you pass the network variable for is moving. So you could say character network manager dot is moving dot value. And the first one can just be false or whatever. It doesn't really matter. So I'm going to keep it as the animator version because that to me is just nicer for a reason. So do whatever you want. There we go. Save that. Now, if we join again, it should be working. So I've started a new game. If I go over here now and I'm just booting up my client, I join. Okay, there I am. 
So now, yep, that's working. I'll drag the window in just so you guys can see. This is the host and this is the client. You can see that the animations are playing on both ends and is working as intended. Okay, so I have this model that some of you may recognize if you saw the opening episode to the Elden Ring series, the introductory episode, or you saw some of my devlogs in the past. This is Dirk. If you guys are a hero patron or higher, this will be available in the description to download for you to use in your project. So I'm also going to add some animations to the download in the next episode, but for now let's keep it very simple. I'm just going to start by simply making another room here, like so. There we go, and this will be for our boss. And I'm going to drag Dirk in there, and again, you use any model, guys, it doesn't matter. Um, whatever model you want to use, especially if you're prototyping, you can just use a, a capsule or a cube if you wanted to. But I'm going to drag Dirk in here like so. He's going to be the boss of our project. So I'm going to start by giving Dirk the generic AI scripts, setting up his nav mesh agent, his lock on transform, you know, all the stuff we've done before. And it helps just to drag the prefab of one of your AI in the scene and just check all the components and kind of match them up. Um, the only difference is instead of an undead combat manager, he's going to get the Dirk combat manager. Okay, so now this is done. And I fast forward, obviously, so you guys don't need to see me do this. We've done this before. You know how to do it. I'm going to open up the AI uh, Dirk Combat Manager, drop my namespace, and I'm just going to make it derive from the AI Character Combat Manager. Now, there's one thing we're going to change um, about this generic AI setup right now because this is a boss. And you can do this any way you want, but I'm going to show you. And before I do that, though, I'm going to add my lock on transform here. So don't forget that. I'm going to change the AI Character uh, Manager here on Dirk to an AI Character Boss Manager. This is because I want bosses to obviously have some logic of their own, as in controlling fog walls and whatnot, but also because we're going to give them a unique ID, and I want this ID to be saved to our character's save file, and we're going to save it using a dictionary, and this is going to determine whether we've defeated the boss or not, and also whether it is awake or not. So make sure Dirk is in your network prefabs, that's also very important, or he won't spawn. Uh, and then open up, or go to Dirk rather, and let's add an AI boss character manager script. And we're going to make that derive from the AI character manager script. Um, and we're going to replace that here now with this boss manager one. So basically, Dirk is getting an AI boss character manager instead of a regular AI character manager script. And since we're deriving from the AI character manager script here, we're also going to get the logic of the character manager uh, and the AI character manager. So let's remove the regular AI character manager. Let's open this up. So what do we want to do in this script? Well. We want to give this AI a unique ID, and then we want to basically, when the AI is spawned, check if we've already defeated it or not using our save file. And if we have defeated it, we want to basically disable this object. And if the save file does not contain a boss monster with this ID, we want to add it. Okay? And likewise, too, if we have not defeated it, then we don't disable it. And we're also going to add some things in the future, too, for if the boss fight has been started at least once, we call that if it's been awakened, uh, then we're going to do some logic. Like sometimes, you know, the boss will play a get up animation, but then if you die and come back, they're just standing there waiting for you. So we'll handle all that as well. So I'm just going to write a few comments here now to make this very simple. And we're going to hopefully handle all of this now in the next episode. And after we have all the states and the triggers done for stuff like a fog wall and whatnot, um, we're going to set up the boss health bar and then actually give Dirk some states, like attacks, and we'll make him change his attack pattern um, via halfway point in the fight, usually triggered when the boss gets to half HP. So again, if you guys feel confident, this is a little bit advanced if you haven't worked with saving dictionaries before, but I highly encourage you to take this little list of comments I've made here now and just try to implement this yourself. And if you don't get it, no big deal, then we'll be back in a week, and then you can see what I've done, and you can correct it there. And if you do get it, you'll find some newfound confidence, hopefully, and you can just try these things on your own. I know a lot of you already do do that, um, but I really encourage you to not be afraid to try things on your own. You'll learn way more in a few hours of experimentation than you will like probably hundreds of hours listening to me, honestly, because it will it will be ingrained more, at least it is in my experience. I definitely learn better from doing. Uh, it's nice to have a loose guide, but don't be afraid to really dig in and try this stuff on your own, especially now where we have so much framework to really attempt things. Just go ahead and start messing about. All right, guys, as always, thank you so much for joining me, and I will see you all next week. A special thank you to my patrons. It is because of each of you lovely individuals I get to keep doing this, and I love doing this. So, again, if you are a patron, down there in the description, you get a Dirk model next week, too. 
I'm going to upload some animations as we use them. There's going to be some attacks, some locomotion, all that good stuff in there. And uh, yeah, that's it, guys. I'll see you next week. Bye.